Hello guys, welcome to Sovereign Solutions to Advanced and we are get solutions to all your sovereign problems. It's nice having you in class again today, RVB. On today's tutorial, we are going to show you how to use XYZ data to create what things, right? Good. So the first thing is for us to add the data. So we add um, XY points data, right? So for the input table, we browse. Good. So we are working on a folder called um, Interpolation and Agis Pro. And then this is the data, right? So we open it up. Okay. Good. So the table has been added. Our X field is X, Y field is Y, and then the Z field is what? Z, right? Good. Now for the coordinate system, the data is actually in a projected coordinate reference system. So we browse to search for what projected. Now they are grouped here world and then this is um, geographic right so we need projected and that projected we need a um, utm wgs 1984 northern hemisphere then we look out for zone 32 right good so that's the um, coordinate system of the data we have just imported so we just run Good, we have successfully imported our XYZ data. So if we open up the attributes table to see the data sets we have, you can see the X, Y, and the Z, right? Good. So the next thing is for us to, uh, to create the team. So we still come down to the find tools and then we search for create team. Okay, so we have that there. See 3D analyst tool. Now the output thing that's um, the, the name with which we want to save what the thing, right? So we click on browse. Good. So let's call this um, SS underscore thing, right? Good. That's um, solving solutions thing. And we save. Then the coordinate system again. Let's use the coordinate system of what the XY table to points that we just then um, defined. That's um, zone 32, right? Good. Then for the input feature class, we already have one um, table there, so we are going to add that to define what our feature class, right? Good. So the height field is actually Z, right? Good. So the input feature is the table we have, the height feature is Z. Then we leave the rest as what well, as default, and then we run. So we have successfully created what the team, right? Good. Now we can do a few things. Let's um, use this drop down to see what the range of elevations and how they have been classified, right? Good. Now when we select this same um, layer we have here, which is what the SS underscore team, and then we come down to this thin layer to see a few properties, right? Good. Then we come to symbology. You are going to see the method with which what the the elevations have been symbolized using what equal interval, a class of nine, and then this is the color scheme, right? Good. So you can actually do some modifications on all of these, changing the color scheme, the classes, the method to different methods that um, you want to use, right? Good. Also, you can display use different symbology like them um, to symbolize your layer using points to symbolize your layer using contours right good so if you click on this it automatically draws them um, a contour or it automatically draws contour lines that are having five meter interval just like you can see i think we can just put this one out just like you can see right good so all of these helps you to um, have a better terrain interpretation of what the um, from the data sets that you have imported, right? Good. So let's um, uncheck that back. Now, having created this same um, thing, we need to convert it to raster, right? Good. So we still come back to the geoprocessing and then we say thing to raster, right? Good. So interpolate the thing using Z values from what? The input thing. So we open it up. We already have a thing here. That's the SS underscore thing. Then the output raster, let's browse. So this is actually T. 
then let's say raster right so we have the raster we click on save then the output data type floating linear observations they are all left at default and then we click on run now we have successfully converted our team to raster right but now if you look at the values now unlike the range of values that you can see here you now have elevations that are both the upper and then the lower values right but which you can still symbolize so we want to use a different color scheme let's assume that um, we want to use this same um, particular color scheme and then we see how it actually appears onwards on our raster right good so now before we leave we can still see how to create contours on this particular surface or on this particular raster we have here so we search for contours the impute raster will definitely be what the thin raster then the output um, feature class we browse so we call these contours right then we need contours at five meters interval contour type we are using just contours and then we click on run good so we have successfully what um, created contours for this particular raster. So if we open up the attributes table this time around, we are going to see what the contour values which we can decide to use to what to label our contour lines. So thanks for coming to class. We have actually run through quite some stuff on today's tutorial. We have shown you how to import what your your XYZ data, how to create what team. From there, we also got some contours over them. Then we also converted the team to raster. And then we have finally or successfully gotten what contours on the raster, right? Good. So thanks for coming to class. We hope we have provided solution to this particular solving problem. We are going to see you on the next tutorial. Ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time. Bye.